Hello, everybody. Welcome to Free Practice 2 coming up very shortly here at Zolder. It's going to be a slightly shorter session than we had this morning of 30 minutes. The track, though, uh, for the time being at least, is dry, whereas uh, if you weren't watching Free Practice 1 this morning, uh, after some early rain, we did have a damp track for, well, most of the session, really. It was uh, dry on the line after the first 10 minutes or so, but there were still some damp patches uh, offline. N needless to say, though, we still saw some very, very quick times with these Class 1 DTM cars uh, tackling this uh, four kilometre long circuit at great speed. Some very early single lap you times you at the start of the session. And you can fire up and wait. It's about one minute. So there, Rennie Rast, who was second quickest in the uh, first free practice session this morning behind Robin Freins, about three and a half tenths of a second uh, behind uh, Robin. Of course, they are the two drivers that are giving uh, Nico Muller, the championship leader, the biggest run for his money so far this season. And they can see uh, the team Re Rosberg teammate to we'll Rene Rast, Jamie up. Green. Jamie with fifth quickest time this morning as we look at Nico Muller getting his uh, radio checks, checks in as well. And uh, Nico of the championship front runners just a little bit off the ultimate pace in that first session this morning. So as I say, Robin Fryne's topped the times, his Ab Sports line teammate with a time of 1 minute 20.075 seconds, 0 0.32 seconds quicker than Rene Rast in second place. 10, 9, 8... Seven, and then we had Mike Rockefeller six, third, five, Nico Muller was four, fourth, Jamie three, Green and Ferdinand two, Habsburg completed the top one, six. And so cars then uh, being released. There is uh, still the threat of some potential rain here during this uh, next 30 minutes or so. It's around about a 50-50 chance that there will be some uh, rain and there are dark clouds up above as you can see, but there are also some breaks in the cloud. It's around about 14 degrees and the forecast for the next two days, the race days, is that it will be slightly cooler, around about 12 degrees, but that there'll be an increased chance of rain. So as it stands uh, for tomorrow and for Sunday, there's around about 64% chance that there's going to be uh, some rain. We'll have a, a, a more in-depth look at that in the morning. The, uh, before, to the first session, but obviously uh, the track is completely, completely dry. And Jamie Green was one of the drivers that uh, left it a little bit later before going out and setting uh, a quick lap time in the first part of the session where they were going for single lap pace. And slows on test, I will keep you updated if something comes. And somehow I have network issues which are hopefully solved in two minutes. And there the team radio from Timo Glock, who was Copy. the other driver that uh, went out and uh, set a, a quick lap time a little bit uh, later on. So he was inside the top 10 in eighth place in that uh, first session this morning. Uh, but as ever, it was not just about going quickly around one lap. It was about trying to set some uh, long run uh, lap times as well. And some of the drivers completed 30 laps or just under 30 laps during the, uh, the session. Perhaps might have had slightly longer long runs had it not been damp at the, the very beginning of the session. Uh, the one thing I will say, and we said in the free practice session this morning, is that the driver that set the fastest time, Robin Fryens, started off on his uh, long run pretty competitively. But as it went on, his times compared to the others really did uh, drop away. So after he uh, came into the pits, he, he ran for around about 15, 16 laps after that. Uh, he started off uh, in the low uh, 122s and high 121s. In fact, his uh, best lap on the longer run was a 121.2. But by the end of it, he was struggling a bit and was consistently in the 124s uh, for the last five or six laps of the session. Uh, whereas uh, Rene Rast seemed to be able to maintain a much stronger, more consistent pace throughout uh, his, uh, his long run as well. He went out and did uh, around about 15 laps as well, but by the end of his session, he was, rather than being in the 124s, still consistently in the low 122s. And uh, even his last uh, properly timed lap was a 122.4. So that was uh, certainly encouraging news for Rene Rast. Nico Muller, as ever it seems to be the case, is able to keep his uh, pace up at, through a long session as well. So he wasn't quite as quick as Robin or Rene during the first four or five laps of the long run. Uh, but again, he kept up a, a pretty good pace towards the end. Not as good as Rene Rast. He, was, he did get down to 
Uh, I mean, he was doing the middle of the session, high 121s and low 122s, but the last few laps have just faded a little bit to uh, sort of high 122s. So René Rast in good shape here, I would say, in terms of getting the car set up for the longer runs. Mike Rockefeller was another one uh, that impressed on that front as well. Indeed, his, uh, his one lap pace was very good also. Uh, so the cars will go out now. Uh, one thing that uh, you can also expect as well as uh, putting in a longer run, probably over around about 10 laps before we came on air, uh, was privy to some team radio and uh, Jonathan Aberdeen was told that he'll be doing a, a 10, 10 timed lap run once he's done a quick uh, a quick run at the start of the session, but also, uh, as well as uh, practicing going around the track quickly, they'll also be tr uh, practicing how quickly they can change the tyres. There'll be uh, some practice pit stops in this as well. There is Jonathan, just about to make his way uh, out of the pits, the former Formula 4 driver, and Nico Mullap, then Robin Frines, two Absports, Absports line teammates. Sports line top of the team standings as well. Audi having already wrapped up in record time, beating their own record from last year at the uh, brand championship. With just 12 races done, it was 14 races done last year when they'd uh, wrapped uh, things up, but they're still, as Dieter Gass has said, very much with their eyes on going out on a high here and taking the drivers' championship and also making sure they take the uh, the team's championship as well, uh, looking already very favourable for them. Uh, Sheldon van der Linde, as he goes over the undulations through this uh, first sector, out through turn six was a particular drop down towards the Gilles Villeneuve chicane here in turn seven and sparks flying as we've seen from the cars. Great looking circuit this here at Zolder. It's got a real good mix of high speed corners, chicanes, which uh, some drivers like, some don't, but it always looks spectacular when a DTM car attacks the uh, chicanes and rides the curbs. Lots of heavy braking zones here as well, and a relatively narrow circuit in parts as well. So it really does uh, mean you have to have absolute concentration at, at all times. It's just over four kilometers long, so 2.49 miles. It's got 10 turns, and uh, the circuit dates back to the early 1960s, 1963, uh, when it was originally built. Hosted the Belgian Grand Prix 10 times, all in the 1970s and early 1980s. And some F1 greats have won here in the past. Jackie Stewart, Nicky Lauda, Mario Andretti have all been Grand Prix winners around this circuit. It's also been used for major cycling events in more recent times. The BMX World Championships, the UCI Cyclocross World Championships have been uh, held here as well. And DTM came back here last year for the first time in what had been 17 years. Raced here last year, but the time before that was way back in 2002. And as was talked about a lot last year, this was uh, where the DTM uh, really started when it was uh, then called the German Production Car Championship. The first ever race was held here, and it was won by Harald Gross in a BMW 635. He uh, was actually second in the race until the latter stages. Hans Joachim Stuck, who went on to become um, the 1990 DTM champion and uh, was a two time Le Mans winner, uh, was the driver that led the race until he had a problem with the car uh, just a couple of laps from the end. He actually lost the front wheel, but uh, his Disappointment turned into, I suppose, legendary status for Harold Gross, who was interviewed on the grid here last year by uh, Verena Reit. Verena's going to be with us, of course, during the course of the main race weekend tomorrow and on Sunday, catching up with team managers and racing drivers and giving us all the insight from uh, down on the grid. But it was a happy hunting ground that first DTM weekend for BMW. They finished first, second, third and fourth in the races. So on board with René Rast, who needs to find about three tenths of a second to uh, go uh, or to close the gap to uh, Robin Frines in terms of single lap pace. But as I say, on longer runs, he's in very good shape here. It's been a pretty decent start to the weekend for him. And so too for Jamie Green, he's just gone through the shot there. And uh, a long overdue, a podium finish and maybe even a race victory, Jamie. So we'll see how he uh, gets on here this weekend. That the drivers enjoy driving, driving this circuit. I know Jamie was very vocal about the fact that he enjoyed driving the, driving the Nürburgring Grand Prix track a couple of meetings ago, because it was the first time he'd ever got the chance to do that in uh, DTM. And it was nice to do something different, having been involved in the championship for such a, a long period of time. Jamie is right up there in the all-time honours list in terms of race starts, but also in terms of uh, race wins. Rennie Rast, who's moved on to 19 wins this season, 
if he gets one more race victory, he'll move ahead of Kurt Tiemann's up into uh, joint third place in terms of the most race wins. That record's still a long way off, though. Bernd Schneider with 43, Klaus Ludwig 37. Then you've got Matthias Ekstrom and Gary Paffert with 23 apiece, just in front of Rene Rast. Jamie Green, a 17-time race winner, but he's in the top five in terms of outright podiums with 42. And earlier this season, that wasn't a particularly happy weekend for him. Jamie uh, surpassed the 200 race start marks, so 205 race starts in the DTM now. And by the end of the season, if he starts the remaining six races, he'll move up to joint fourth in the, the table, equal with Kurt Team on 211 race starts, and only behind Bernd Schneider, Klaus Ludwig, and Jörg van Ommen. OK, then, so quick time starting to come in now. 1 minute 20.285 for Muller, a 120.301 for Freins in second, Rast at 120.745, the usual suspects. The top three in the championship are all up there. Uh, they were all up there because Jamie Green now with a quicker time and a 120.150 second lap. He was the absolute quickest in the first sector. As you get a replay of uh, more gravel being kicked up out onto the circuit where you run just a little bit wide and over the kerbs there. And we saw that a couple of times in the first free practice session this morning. The time should be quicker, you would expect, with a bit more rubber having been laid down by uh, the uh, support categories. The fact that the track is completely uh, dry now and air temperature is still very similar. And Rennie Rast has had a proper trip through the gravel trap. So uh, this time all the way deep into the gravel trap that will not do his tyres any good. He's been able to recover and get back onto the circuit. Doesn't look like there's any real damage to the car but that will uh, obviously affect his uh, run. So that looked like it was coming out of uh, turn four as he uh, runs along the, uh, the straight at the back of the paddock now. So he'll make his way back, probably to the pits to just get the car checked over, I would suspect. Muller now top of the time, so the 120.026. Timo Glock's on a personal best lap as well. Robin Freins was quickest in all three sectors this morning, which you don't see very often. The lap split into three roughly equal segments. The first sector from the start through to the exit of turn four before they get to the Kleiner chicane. The middle sector, sector two, is the longest sector at 29 seconds or so. And the last sector takes in the, uh, the last couple of turns and chicanes as uh, Muller at the top of the times. But Glock now going up to second place there and just a fraction behind him. A 120.026 for him, 120.065 for Glock. And here understeering the moment that Rene Rast took a trip into the gravel trap. He was fighting it all the way and he almost got away with it. Oversteering to correct it, avoid the spin, and then just keeping the power moderately in so that he can get through the gravel trap without getting the wheels buried, but also without doing too much damage to the car or tyres. All right, Nico Muller. Uh, he's top of the times, but Timo Glock has gone absolute best in the first sector, and Robin Freins has gone quicker than anybody in the second sector. It's about a tenth slower than his uh, fastest sector two time from the free practice one session this morning. Fabio Scherer again in the back end, uh, well out of shape as he comes out of the final turn. Here comes Robin Freins, though, and this should be a good lap. Going to get him up from eighth place, that is for sure. And straight to the top it goes. One minute 19.926 seconds now. So that is the fastest lap of the day so far across the two free practice sessions, 119.926. That is very impressive. The qualifying lap record here set last year by Marco Wittmann in the BMW was 121.307. Shows how much these cars have um, continued to develop this season. So Muller second with a 120.026, Glock third with a 120.065, and then Ferdinand Habsburg going well again. Fourth place, 120.127. Uh, he was uh, fourth because Rockefeller has just gone up there and Lote Duval's just crossed the line and got into the top three as well, to second place. So it's Freins and Duval, the two drivers beneath the 120 mark now. 119.926 for Freins, 119.931 for Duval. That's five thousandths of a second difference. Rast didn't come in, he didn't check the car over, and he's still going quickly. He's just gone third fastest despite that trip through the gravel trap. So 120.017 for Rene. And that uh, now means that Rast in third, Muller in fourth, and Rockefeller in fifth. They are split, the three of them, by just 12 thousandths of a second. And there's only five thousandths of a second between the top two, Freins in Duval. It's looking very, very competitive uh, as we uh, look forward to tomorrow morning's qualifying session. The, 20, the first of two 20-minute qualifying sessions that we'll have this weekend coming up at 10.40 local time uh, tomorrow with the race due to start just after 1.30. Uh, 
Same format for day two on Sunday. Robert Kubitz has had a, a decent start to the lap. The personal best through the first set. He completes the lap and was through with a 120.9, but he's uh, 960, but his best was three thousandths of a second quicker than that. Here we go, then getting ready for a, uh, a practice pit stop by uh, the looks of things. And ideally, as I say, I'll be looking for no more than seven seconds from the time the car comes to a stop to the time that it's released back out onto the circuit. And worn tyres being uh, put on. And here we go. Timo Glock in. Go, 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 to go. Nine crew members that can work on it. And away they go. And that's some timed, but my stopwatch running that was just about seven seconds so decent stop that tremendous to watch them working poetry in motion that must be incredibly stressful you've got to stop yourself rushing i suppose in that situation you know you've got to be as quick as you can but you've got to also have an element of control there so that you don't go too fast make a mistake and end up with a slow pit stop always in awe of the fact that they can uh, turn these cars around so quickly during those pit stops it can make a huge difference as well I've been many times this season where we've seen uh, places change during the uh, the pits thanks to the team gaining track position quite a few times where cars have run up the pit lane absolutely wheel to wheel as well so Robin Fryens one minute 19.926 seconds top of the times with Loic Deval one minute 19.931 uh, Loic was uh, seventh quickest this morning with a 120.9, so he has gone a second quicker than he went this morning, whereas Robin has only gone uh, just about a tenth of a second quicker than he went this morning. So big step forward for Duval. Rene Rast, 120.017, just being pushed back in now. Could he have got a bit more out of the car had he not had that trip through the gravel the lap before? He's at the time, maybe. But still, it's uh, competitive and... Four tenths quicker, which is what he was looking for, than he went this morning. So much closer. So he's rather than being second as he was in free practice, one he's third. But actually, the gap but between the him and the up. fastest time is much closer. Uh, tire warm up felt good. Still, I think in the first push lap, um, the t front tires were not 100% ready. So maybe we have to consider for tomorrow when it's colder uh, two warm up laps. Copy. Yeah, that's going to be uh, more and more of an issue this season because of the late start to the year that we've had. Yeah, it's uh, much quicker now, I think, yeah. Track is rubbed in up more. Yeah, for long run, it's but not sure it will change massively, but anyway, you know what Yeah, but I'll, I, yeah, I drive different. <laughs> uh, there you go. Well, so Robin Fryan saying what I suspected, Robin, that I the track to, was uh, rubbed in, it was quicker, earlier, more grippy. So you can see there in uh, turns two and four, you suffer with more understeer. Uh, mainly the lap time is loss is coming from two and one. Um, yeah. yeah, it's just just understeer. One is not really an issue on understeer, but two and four and those corners, I'm, I'm quite struggling. Okay, I so hear the quality lap. It's honestly with you, yes, I can see, but it was no so much lap time loss. Only on turn two, a little bit more. That's no, quite. but it's it's quite a lot actually in four. Uh. Okay. Like I'm not having fun there. <laughs> It's always very open, isn't he, uh, Robin? So struggling through a couple of turns, turn two and turn four in particular were mentioned there, and understeer the big thing for uh, Robin Fryens in that conversation with his race engineer at Ab Sports Line, Michael Petit. So still not 100% happy, but Robin was saying the track definitely grippier now, more rubbered up on the time. His time was a fraction quicker, a tenth quicker than he went this morning, but others like Loic Duval and René Rast have made bigger leaps forward. So they've closed the gap to him. So as I say, René Rast was second to Robin Fryens this morning, but he was over three tenths of a second slower. Now he's third. He's got Loic Duval in between him himself and Robin Fryens, but actually the gap is much uh, closer. It's only uh, 94 thousandths of a second between them. So car's heading out now. It's obviously a shorter session, so they're not going to be able to do as many laps on the trot. But uh, probably looking at around about uh, 10 laps. It's a relatively short lap time. This is one that I was put in quite a few laps uh, this morning. See the wind farms uh, around the circuit. It's an uh, industrial pass to this uh, region. 60 years worth of uh, coal mining, hard coal mining in this area. But it's also a pretty green area as well. Lots of forests around, lots of heaths in the surrounding area in uh, central Belgium. 
Yeah, it's a proper old school racetrack with the drivers are enjoying great view here then. This low slung onboard camera and they chase each other uh, through the lap, through the chicanes. And you can see the change of direction of these cars. It's not just about the acceleration, the braking performance, the top speed of these DTM cars. It's the way these things handle as well. And the way they just change direction instantaneously. Absolutely uh, ferocious when they're at uh, full speed. So Robin Fries, Lode de Val, Rene Rast, the top three. Muller was fourth. Rockenfeller, fifth. Glock, sixth. Habsburg, seventh. Green in eighth. Wittmann ninth, Van der Linde tenth, Scherer eleventh, Aberdeen twelfth, Eng race winner here last year thirteenth, Kibitzer fourteenth, Hour struggling a bit so far this weekend fifteenth. In fairness to Lucas though, he won't have raced here before, will he? Because he wasn't in the championship last year, whereas quite a few of the other drivers have been here before. For Robert Kibitzer, all the circuits are new, pretty much as a DTM driver. Uh, in fact, they all are, aren't they? and I have some experience of Hockenheim at the end of the season. And for Harrison Newey, the other rookie, he's learning all of the uh, circuits as well. But doing a good job in that first free practice session this morning was Harrison, as he adapts from uh, life as a single-seater and GT racer to DTM. So they're completely dry circuit now. Philip Eng coming through, still Getting some sparks up through the tyres, though, as he works his way through the chicane along the back straight and uh, building up some speed. So cars, most of them on their outlaps now, just uh, trying to find a bit of track position as they go for these longer uh, runs. Felipe definitely slowing up there to give himself a bit of space as he gets set for his long run with just about 13 minutes of the session remaining and over the line to start the attack, start the lap. So a huge weekend this, only three race weekends to go in this slightly shortened season in terms of nine rounds rather than uh, sometimes 10, so 18 rounds of the championship, 12 are down, we're at two thirds distance. And we've only got 18 points between Nico Muller and Robin Freins. Nico on 242, Robin on 224, Rene Rast 195 is 47 points behind. So he's the one that really could do with closing the gap, although he's in a good run of form. He's had four consecutive podium finishes. However, the others have been picking up wins. Muller's had two wins and two fifths from the uh, pair of race weekends we had at the Nürburgring. Freins had two wins as well, and a second and a fifth. So he's been consistent, but he has been overall losing points and hasn't had a win now since the sixth, no, fifth race of the season at the Lausitz Ring. Others looking for their first race victories if they can. On board with Robin Freins as he attacks the curve. That's a great shot. And zooming right in on Robin now as he makes his uh, way out through turn seven. Through the first sector split he goes. And uh, sorry, second sector split and a 30.3 through there. 25.9 through the first sector. And compare that with the absolute best sector times that he set on his flying lap in the first free practice session. Sector 1 was a 25.08, Sector 2 was a 29.36, and Sector 3 a 25.5. So a second down on that middle sector as they uh, look for the longer run pace. Through goes Robin, and that's a 122.3. Creep into the 121s, we'll get low 122s consistently. That's pretty good going, it seems, on a long run pace. Maybe a little bit quicker in this afternoon session. On board with Sheldon van der Linde as he goes up through the gears. He's making his way out through uh, turn four now. Just eases a little bit. Holds on to fifth gear though, and still over 190 kilometres an hour. Now down the gears. Third gear for this next chicane. Through he goes in the BMW. <laughs> Best time in that first part of the run was 120.4, which is actually only half a second off the fastest time, but puts him back in that tenth position, the driver fourth in the championship. Well, two race winners this year for BMW, the other having been Lucas Auer at the Lausitz ring earlier in the season. Right over the crest at turn six for Sheldon van der Linde, fifth gear down to second gear, and about just under 80 kilometers an hour, about 75, 76 kilometers an hour at the slowest point through that uh, right-hander at turn eight, the slowest corner of the lap, goes through turn 10 now, 
the Jackie X chicane to complete the lap and over the line he'll come let's have a look what the time is like for Sheldon he crosses the line and well, he's got into the 121 Sheldon van der Linde 121.5 in his uh, previous lap in fact quite a lot of them in the in the low 121s it's definitely a quicker pace so far than it was at the start of the long runs in the morning session that's to be expected really but you've got uh, Rast and Muller both done 121.4s and 121.5 for van der Linde He's the third quickest. 121.5 for Duval as well. So that's the pace. Absolute quickest though is Rast. 121.410. Muller 121.419. And then 121.524 for Van der Linde. And 124.430 now for Duval. has gone quicker. And a 121.3 for René Rast. So that puts him quickest at the moment. The quickest man on the track. 121.358. Starts to look very good for René. Got onto the pole in the last race position in the second race at the Nürburgring around the sprint layout of the circuit but he was beaten off the line by Robin Fines. So interesting to see how the pace has changed now. Track conditions have certainly got something to do with that but also drivers really tuning themselves in now. And you can see from the track map, the track graphic, just how busy it is out there. Everybody bar one or two drivers out on track. In fact, Newey's just gone back out, so I think they're all out on the circuit now. Uh, the exception is Timo Glock, I think, who's in the pits. And just said he's uh, on the previous lap, his, his best lap of the session to go sixth. So he'll be having maybe a slightly shorter long run than the others. And right on board with the 2014-2016 champion, Marco Wittmann. He first got a taste of life in the DTM support paddock as a Formula 3 racer in the F3 Euro Series in which he was incredibly quick and successful. Timo Glock, sorry, Mike Rockefeller going over the line with the uh, Team Phoenix out. He was third quickest this morning in free practice one. He's fifth at the moment. Here is a replay, super slow-mo. Attacking the kerbs, getting two wheels clear off the tarmac. You see the suspension being worked to its limits there, riding the next kerb. There are some flatter kerbs through some of the chicanes than that, but that one does lift you up if you attack it, which you have to do. And a rookie going through. His last lap was a 121.7. It's not the absolute quickest out there, but he's that sort of second group, not too far away. That's the crest going out through this very quick left-hander at turn six. And through the chicane that le leads into uh, turn seven. And Rockenfeller looking pretty good here. That first sector was a 25.5. The best on this lap through the first sector is Muller on a 25.4. But he's quicker than everybody else through that first sector. So looking like a good lap, this. Best that we've had on this longer run is a 121.2 now. That's Rast again. It was 121.3, a 121.2 now. Uh, but also in the 121.3s, Loic de Valm, who's made a huge step forward in this second free practice session. Rockenfeller coming through and to complete his lap. And that's a tenth slower than the previous one, a 121.8. Duval has gone through with a 121.5. And René Rast gets quick, quicker and quicker. It's a 121.1 now. So his last three laps, 121.3, 121.2 and 121.1. I know the car's getting slightly lighter off fuel load, but the tyres are also getting more worn, which is the more important factor. But this is good stuff from René. He's in a good position here for both qualifying and, more importantly, for the race. If it's dry tomorrow, which is uh, not an absolute given. All right, replay of the driver second in the championship. Robin Fryens, super slow-mo. Complaining of understeer earlier on, and here's another example of it. Not as bad as some that we've seen there at that corner running wide, but you can see it's been pretty consistent by the amount of gravel that was already on the circuit there. Amanda Linder as well with a wheel, the left rear just kissing the gravel trap. Well, Robin Fryden's quick though, 121.293 on his last lap. Only René Rast has gone quicker. Started this lap pretty well as well through the first sector of 25.6. Got Fryden's Duval, Rast have all done 25.6s through the first sector, but Muller and Rockenfeller quicker, 25.5s through that first part of the lap. And Robin Fryden's once again going on the attack. 
coming out through the Gilles Villeneuve chicane through turn seven on the run now in between the trees to the left hand kink and up towards turn eight and through the Yock and Rinse chicane which is a much wider chicane accelerating out through there with that only sort of easing off but still taking tremendous speed and changes of direction he goes through van der linde follows through the final uh, chicane at turn 10 now and going a little bit wide using the curbs Frines will go through his last lap a 121.293 that one a 122.171 a very neat tidy lap from robin Frines. But we've also had a 121.149 from Timo Glock. So Timo is actually the quickest man on the track at the moment with a 121.149. Fryn second with a 121.171. Here's Robert Kubica, great slow-mo that. Look at the uh, sparks flying from the front right corner of the BMW. It's an ART Grand Prix car. And that was an ART shot, that. Not very artistic. Super slow mo of Robert Kubica, who is lapping in the high 122s. So he's about a second away from where he needs to be, really. From the main group, and more than a second and a half quicker than some of them out there. But he'll try and close the gap as the weekend goes on. I'm certainly giving it full beans, that's for sure. Grand Prix winner and former WRC2 rally champion when he went into rallying after his uh, accident putting him out of Formula at one. The inaugural WRC2 champion in fact. Whatever he's driven over the years, he's driven well. Huge support from back home in Poland. Willing him on. First ever Polish driver in Formula One. Now the first ever Polish driver to compete in the DTM for the Orlean. All on uh, Team ART squad. Jonathan Aberdeen just behind on track. There's Jonathan getting on. 121.7s. So not too far away, actually. Three or four tenths away from what the very quickest drivers are doing at the moment, but looking pretty good for Jonathan. Back on board now with Nico Muller, whose last lap was a 121.4. So a couple of seconds away from the ultimate pace when they were going for a qualifying replica run. But these are good times, and they all seem to be maintaining it. Rockenfeller's just gone through with another 121, a 121.8, Devala 121.8. So the times are just backing off a bit now, but they're still in the 121s. A 121.8 for Rast as well. Quicker slightly than the two, the other two. 121.845 for him, 121.859 for Rockenfeller, 121.897 for Devala. It is close. And a 121.9 for Habsburg's a decent effort. Muller quicker than anybody at the moment, though. He's again doing this thing where he um, builds up the speed. In the middle of his run, he's really quick, and towards the end of the run, he keeps the pace going. So 121.5, he now becomes the quickest driver out on the circuit. Now, a recap of the current standings with just 18 points between uh, Muller and Frines. 56 points up for grabs this weekend, 25 for each of the race wins, and three points if you put it on pole position in each of the qualifying sessions, points for the top three, which make a big difference. What was it? Rene Ras last year picked up, I think it was 35 points or so. Uh, in bo Yeah, it was 35 points in bonus points through qualifying. So that's the equivalent of a race win and a fifth place finish. It's three points, essentially, not three points, but you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a huge difference that can make. He was by far the best points scorer in qualifying last year. The next best was Marco Bittman, who scored 16, and Nico Muller was third best, but with only 10 didn't ultimately make the absolute difference because he eventually won the championship by a bigger margin than that, but it still made a difference. The best qualifiers, the best qualifier this year, just about on average, has been Robin Frines. He's averaged second on the grid. Nico Muller has averaged second on the grid as well, but Robin's got slightly the better average and has had more pole positions than anybody this season, Robin. I mean, not had one before the start of the season. He had three from the first four races. So five poles for him, five poles for Muller, five poles for Rast. And already, actually, Robin Frines has accumulated 26 points from qualifying, so more than a race win. Muller's the next best with 21, and Rast not quite as good, but still with a useful total of 17 points scored. And then the next best, because those three have dominated qualifying really, is Loke Duval, who's scored six points from 
at the qualifying sessions has had just the one pole position. The only driver outside the top three in the championship to have scored a pole this year. Jonathan Aberdeen has gone into the pits, so to Fabio Scherer and Sheldon van der Linde. So at the moment, the top five places in this session filled by Audis, Freins, Duval, Rast and Muller. And those drivers are going well as we look at Jamie Green on the longer run pace as well. Jamie set the eighth best time. It's just on an outlap at the moment. With eighth best time on the, uh, the quick part of the session this morning. Flag is out. So Jamie's just gone back out really to make sure he can have another practice start, which they'll do at the end of this session. And impressively, his last lap, Robin Freund's still very quick, which he didn't manage this morning. So 122.028, whereas he dropped to the 124s, as I say, for the last five or six laps of his admittedly longer run in that first free practice session. So that's, that's good for him. Fitman, though, also going well as the flag. We've seen now being waved, 121.976 seconds for him. And Muller, 121.396. So basically as quick at the end of the session than the others were at the start of the session. So I'd say Nico is, will be much happier at the end of free practice too than at the end of the first free practice session. Even though he's only shown fourth in terms of times like he was this morning, he's closed the gap. He's fourth, yes, but he's only uh, just, just over a tenth of a second away from the best time of the session. And crucially, he looks very good on the longer run or the medium run now. So the, if you look at the results and you see Robin Fryan's top of both three practice times, you'll think, well, nothing really changed. But the truth is they've all really closed the gap to him. So Robin Fryan's will end the day with his name at the top of both free practice sheets. Nate Duval, the driver that's really made the biggest change there, though. There he is, about to come back out, ready for his practice start. Getting a huge amount of time. His best lap in that session, a 119.9. His best lap in the first session was a 120.9. So as I said, he gained a second. And the track, yes, was drier, but nobody else has gained a second like he has. In fact, Fryens only went what, a tenth quicker than he went this morning. Rast has gone three tenths quicker, so he's gained a bit as well. Muller actually gained a lot, didn't he? Gained eight tenths of a second. So he'll be he'll be very pleased with that as well. Uh, Mike Rockefeller third in the first session, fifth in the second, but he too gained a lot of time, eight tenths of a second. So if you look down the top six, really. Freund is the one that's made the least progress but forward. But are you sure? Because I did not get the check and flag, right? You are sure that I can go straight or I need to get the check and flag first? Of the pits when the check and flag was out, so they are doing starts already. It's making sure Timo got there that he um, doesn't break the rules. Making sure that he is allowed to just go straight into the start, practice start now. Doesn't need to see the checkered flag, the flag he saw when he was at the pot out in the pit lane. Marco Wittmann's completed his start. We're going to get Ferdinand Habsburg to your right, Timo Glock to your left. Red lights come on on the gantry. Five sets of reds. The instant they go out, off they go. Looks like they both made decent starts there. You see from Timo Glock's car, almost identical starts, I would say. Ferdinand was slightly ahead. Timo having to think about trying to go around the outside of him. So good starts, really good start from Mike Rockefeller. He's much quicker off the line than Philip Eng. Hello. Stop. That's fair enough. And Harrison Newey being guided into position. There is the number 10, Audi to the left of the picture. And Lucas Auer to the right makes his start on the BMW. And this should be interesting because the next two are two of the front runners in the championship, Lote de Val. And here with the onboard camera, Robin Freins. In fact, Freins is going to go alone as uh, Lake Duval holds back. Here we go. Watch him launch up then. Second gear, third gear. I know Duval is going, but wanted to be a long way back. He's pretty much on the top of him, though, when they get into the first corner. So Duval must have had a good start. And there's Nico Muller revving up. Completely dry track as it stayed, even though it's overcast. Away he goes with Kibitza for company, it looks like. Rene Rass now getting ready for his final practice start before we get into the main end 
of the business with qualifying to come as the next session at 10.40 tomorrow. Uh, Rennie Rast all his own away well. He too, though, will be very pleased with the way that session went, despite the fact he had that trip through the gravel trap early on in the session. Otherwise, it's been very good, and they've learnt something about the track. They've learnt something about how long it's taken the tyres to get up to temperature, and that could be even longer a process, as we heard tomorrow, with it being two or three degrees uh, cooler, the forecast. And potentially some rain. But I don't think it's quite worth looking at the forecast in detail until the night before or the day of, because it can change uh, so much. So for the drivers, uh, job on the track now done, but they'll go and look at the data with the teams and the engineers, see what they can improve, see what worked well, see if they can tweak anything. And the cars have to be double checked over. There's the result then of the second free practice session with Frines, Duval and Rast, the top three. Muller fourth, but much closer. Rockenfeller fifth, Glock in sixth. And then, as the best of the uh, BMWs, then Habsburg, Green, 7th and 8th, Fitman, 9th, Vanderlinde, 10th, Scherer, uh, a pretty good effort in 11th place, Aberdeen, 12th, Eng, 13th, Kibitza, 14th, Auer, 15th, and Newey not as high up the order that time as he was in the first free practice session. The British driver ends up in 16th place, just about a second between them. So... We can get some super slow-mos now of our top three from that second free practice session. And it's Rene Rast, third in the championship in third place. Second place with a big improvement, a second quicker than he went in the first free practice session at Loic Duval here at Zolder. And he was just five thousandths of a second behind the driver that topped the times, and that for the second time was Robin Frines. So Robin Frines will go into tomorrow full of confidence qualifying coming up tomorrow at 10.40 local time. From me, Chris Hartley and the team, thanks for watching. We'll speak to you tomorrow.